Hi everyone, in this video I want to actually show you how to create meshes for the lightning strike. So in the previous video we've made a texture in Substance Designer, we will be bringing this texture into Houdini just so we can display it on the mesh that we're going to create. So this is the mesh that we're going to be creating for the main strike and also I've got some additional strikes that actually happens on the ground like uh, those ones for example we're gonna create those as well those are just being reused from our main strike however they are happening upon the impact so they're going in the opposite direction very very quickly okay so let me show you the meshes now in the engine so this is our main strike which is going to procedural generate it in the Houdini and we're actually going to have a setup for any future lightning strikes that we might have. And those ones actually happening on the ground. You might want to create like a cross section, which I'm going to show you how to do as well in case you need this to be uh, viewable from all the angles in case you're going to be having some uh, weird results with the lightning strike. And this is just to add a variation to the strike. So as you can see here, this lightning strike is happening actually very, very fast. I think those meshes, they actually work with that strike. Okay, so let's jump into Houdini and let's create those meshes from scratch. So I'm gonna bring Geo node by pressing tab on my keyboard and typing Geo. I'm gonna name this uh, lightning strike and I'm gonna dive inside. In here, I'm just gonna press tab and bring the line. I'm gonna hover over my viewport and press space and F just to zoom on that line. Next, I'm just gonna bring resample. Double check the points here. And as you can see, we can also change this uh, to be uh, maximum segments. I mean, we can decide how many points, points we actually need. So I'm going to set this to maybe 10. And what I need to do now, I just want to create a group that's going to offset the points in the middle. So I don't want to do anything to the points at the top and the bottom, only the points in the middle. So if you could, if you're going to use the point jitter, for example, and as you can see, I'm just going to enable it. And once I start offsetting, I'll let me zero those values. Because I actually, I don't want to offset it on the Y axis, just X and Z. As you can see, once we start tweaking the scale, our start and end point being offset as well. So in between here, let's create a group node. Uh, let's call it ends. Let's click here so we can actually preview what we're doing and what I'm going to do, I'm going to enable, keep the bounding regions and let's try to make it maybe procedural. So I'm going to go to my line, select length and click on copy parameter. I'm going to go to group now. For the size, I'm just going to right click and paste relative reference. And in here, I'm going to do the same. However, I'm just going to divide by two at the end. Okay, so now, for example, if you click on the line once and you increase the size, oh, sorry, length, your bounding box is going to uh, cover uh, the line. Okay, so I'm just going to set it to one. And now what I actually want to do, I want to dive in uh, this one. And instead of center, I want to add minus at the end and maybe 0.2 or actually I don't want to touch the center because I want this always to be on the center and instead let's maybe um, add minus 0.2 to the size and group type I'm going to change this to points and as you can see now we're selecting only the points that are actually in the middle okay however Maybe I just want to give a little bit more space. I want those two points not be selected as well. So now if you go to the point jitter, 
and for the group select ends as you can see you can actually tweak the only the points that are in this group okay and now obviously if you go to your line and increase your length you can see you are maintaining your ends within that group right so next thing i actually want to do another resample because i want to smooth those results a little bit and i'm gonna change this to subdivision curves and i'm gonna change the maximum segment to lower value maybe six for now next i'm gonna use sweep in here i'm gonna use a ribbon I'm gonna scroll down here, take this box, and now I can actually manipulate how I want this to look like. So I'm just gonna open this, select this dot, and change it maybe to 0.2, and you can create like a nice curvy line using the Bezier curve. I'm going to change this to um, Bezier and now you could create like a very nice transition from point 0.2 to full 1, okay? You can also roll your mesh if you want, it depends what kind of axis you want this to face. I'm just going to go with default and if I need some additional rotation I'm going to do it in inside the engine. Okay, let's go back maybe here and change the columns because we don't need much so maybe uh, let's go with two next I actually want to have some UVs so I'm just gonna go to the top there's a UV UVs and attribute I'm gonna take compute UVs click here and preview the UVs now and as you can see they kind of stretch and go in above 0 to 1 value so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna bring UV transform node and for the scale here I'm just gonna type a 1 slash dollar sign size X oops without a hashtag like this and I'm gonna do the same for the Y Okay, if you now select your UV transform, this is gonna bring your texture into the into the zero to one UV space. Okay, so now let's apply our texture that we did in substance in the last video. So I'm just gonna bring the quick labs material, enable it, and into the base color, I'm gonna plug my texture with an alpha. So I just applied this into the base color texture and it seems like the opacity or alpha has been automatically applied. And to be honest, I'm actually gonna go with uh, this. And if I need some additional parameters to tweak, so for example, if I want to stretch my texture a little bit or tile it more, I'm just gonna do that inside the uh, game engine. Right, so the next thing is I actually wanna apply some normals. So I'm gonna go with the lab soft normals here and go with 180 degree. Uh, let me select all of this. I'm gonna press Shift and L. It's just gonna do a little bit tidy up on those nodes. And last thing, I actually wanna bring the transform tool and I'm gonna export it with 50 scale. I'm usually increasing the scale mainly to uh, match the game engine scale. I think side effect recommends 100. I usually go with 50 to have like an in-between value. And obviously if I need a bit more scale, I'm just gonna do it inside the game engine. Right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna select my setup, copy, paste it here. I'm gonna delete this transform node and actually gonna use that one for the engine scale. I'm gonna call it engine scale. And if I need, I'm just gonna Flag that one here and export from that node. Or you can create null and 
call this one export okay so why do we need this one i'm gonna press um, space and f again just to zoom in on this i'm gonna get rid of the jitter for now and in here i'm actually gonna use a bend okay i'm gonna activate that node and in bend i'm gonna maybe put a 90 value here i'm gonna scroll down and change the capture here okay so for the capture i actually want to change it to um, maybe let's keep it one however you can select your line and do the same thing so for example in if length of your line is one you can go here and set the capture length to the same size okay so now i actually want to match my bend okay so i'm just gonna get rid of that one oops go back and press one here okay what it's gonna do actually it's gonna just set the capture region to the one we need i mean obviously if you get different results it means that your bends on a different axis so we'll try different capture directions i'm just gonna go with this one because it works um, in my case okay you could do 180 and you could get that kind of um, lightning however i like to keep it on 90 and then rotate it manually using transform node as next so i'm just gonna go into this transform node and i'm gonna apply additional rotation to that mesh okay and i think it might be maybe 45 yep seems like it's 45. now what you might do you might want to go to sweep surface and actually invert that one it seems like i uh, just got rid of my point here so i'm just gonna click once and drag it to the top and create that nice curve that we had before maybe it's just a bit strong at the end so i'm just gonna take that point and change its value to point let's go with 0.4 so I'd imagine the lightning strike hits the ground and then it travels outwards let's enable enable j a pointed jitter as you can see we're kind of getting a slightly crazy result so for that one let's maybe change the axis like this and you might get some uh, different results based on your seed okay feel free to tweak the axis scale so for example if you want a little bit uh, point jitter on that one just change those values and you might get a different results okay if you want a bit softer results just go to resample and ramp up the segments Try to avoid those, so maybe lower the points or play with the, the point jitter seed and pick slightly different uh, look. Okay, so that's how I create those uh, lightning on the ground. I would suggest that you export a couple of those variations using the seed option here, so you can have a different variation. Okay, and the last bit, let's maybe try to create a cross section. Okay, so let's go with that example because I think it's slightly more difficult to, to, than the one with a straight uh, lightning. So where we have a sweep node, and let's copy that setup and paste it next. Let's make some space here and let's get the uh, merge node. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and actually create a bit more space plug those two here select my merge and in here I'm gonna dive to this uh, sweep and I'm gonna just 
try different options like for example roll so go with 90 and you get a cross section so now or actually let's merge it after the UVs so I'm just gonna press Y on my keyboard you get those scissors I'm gonna cut those lines and bring those together after the UVs I'm gonna get rid of that one because I don't need it Plug it back here transform and that's how you get the cross section okay so if you don't have a cross section um, you might have a difficulty seeing this from a uh, different angles so it depends what kind of projects you're working on for example from the top-down view I don't think you need a cross section uh, from like third person a uh, third person view or first person view you might want to go with the cross section and see if that actually works for you and now if you can go to the point jitter tweak the seed and you're gonna get a variation of the lightning strike very quickly okay so i hope you found it helpful obviously if you want to export this to engine just make sure you export it with the correct scale and um, yeah so you got two variations there you got the ones that actually happening after the hit and the main lightning strike that comes from the top so I'll save that setup and use it whenever you're making some kind of lightning.